we got one hour in the books of this historic. Oh, it is, isn't it? Is this the first time WFAN and MSG have simulcast an event? This is the most telecast right. room in radio. <laughs> That's right. We're just uh, just like Imus on C-SPAN around here. Uh, we'll be here for another hour, too, unless they throw us out earlier as we approach 9 o'clock. Howie Rose joined in studio by Stan Fischler. Walt Clyde Frazier's are coming, and so are your phone calls. But first, the update. And Bill Dawson, come on back. And that's what's happening. I'm Bill Daughtry with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the radio home of Howie Rose and the flagship station for New York Knick basketball. <laughs> William, it's five minutes after nine. Howie Rose with you until ten. Joined in the studio by not only Stan Fischler of Sports Channel, The Hockey News, and sundry and various other publications, but also the Madison Square Garden Network cameras. Clyde Frazier will join us between now and ten o'clock, too. You know they're bringing back... Hey, Daughtry, did you ever have a pair of Clyde's? You know they're bringing back Puma Clyde sneakers? They're kind of, yeah, well, they're coming back. There's some press conference next week. They're going to announce them. Flashback. All right, here now, commentary on headline issues of the day, substituting this morning for Imus Washington's senior political analyst, Richard Nixon. Here is the senior senator from the state of South Carolina, the Honorable Strom Thurmond. Good morning, good morning. Uh, do I just talk about it like this here? Is, is that all right? Yes. Well, so let me just say that I am honored to appear here with you, Amos, uh, for a friend of mine of many years and a fine American, Dick Nixon. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to extend my wishes to him for a speedy recovery. Uh, now then, what, uh, what do you want to talk about, Amos? Well, that's up to you, I mean. What, what's on your mind? Well, that'll be just fine. Uh, you know, Amos, you and I have something in common that maybe you don't know about. Uh, I'm 92 years old, and my wife is hardly out of her teens. Right. And uh, I understand that you're about to end of the <laughs> same kind of marriage. Is that right? Well, sort of. Uh, well, congratulations, son. You know, uh, down south, we got a name for folks like you and me. Bassinet bandit. <laughs> Just joke, son. Come on, laugh it up. Right. <laughs> let me uh, let me give you some of my thoughts on some of the big stories, okay? Isn't that uh, what Mr. Nixon does? Yeah. All right. First of all, uh, that compensatory damage settlement for Rodney King. Right. You bring that boy down to South Carolina, and we'll settle up with him. We'll give him $3.80 and hit him 3.8 million times. <laughs> See? I don't think Mr. King will be driving through the Palmetto State at no 276 miles per hour now, do you? Uh, probably not. No, sir. And let me tell you something else. I don't think the ladies of the Senate chamber are going to try to embarrass any more officers of the United States Navy again anytime soon after they got their fanny's paddle the other day trying to take a couple of stars away from Admiral Frank Kelso, a genuine war hero. Yeah. See? The only reason they got their underwear in a knot over that tailhook convention is because they know that any of them boys would rather grope a wet ferret in a fuse box <laughs> and get within Harrison distance of Diane Feinstein or Carol Mosley Brown. See? <laughs> yeah, hell, that just is jealous, that's all. Yeah. Now, let's look at this uh, situation we've gotten ourselves into in Bosnia now. Now, what we've got to do is persuade President Clinton to keep his fat nose out of everything. <laughs> See? If those people over there are so dead set on killing each other, then as the ranking Republican on the Armed Services Committee, I say, let them have at it. Yeah. I'm hoping they ethnically clean everybody out there. <laughs> so we'd have us someplace to send all these illegal immigrants causing us so much trouble over here. Well, See? <laughs> sounds like the perfect solution to me. Muslims out, Haitians in. <laughs> Say, in fact, uh, why don't you carry that message to the president for me when you see him down Washington? He's telling it, uh, Senator Thurman says we've got too many Negroes, Jews, and Spaniards in America, yeah. and if he can keep anything straight, to send them to the former Yugoslavia before he and Warren Christopher make this here the former United States of America. Yeah. Well, I tell you, the board's an embarrassment to the Confederacy. Yes, I think that's all my time, Amos, so uh, let me just say I'm Senator Strom Thurmond. <laughs> Forget hell, the South and my shorts are both going to rise again. Thank you. Uh, give me a slug of that there vital key, would you, son?
I think I've just been dissed by Imus. I had uh, supposedly a little shot with him on the air, you know, at yeah. 30. Yeah. So uh, we called in, and I'm on the phone, and I hear Imus ranting and raving. About what? About the fact that I had left the phone <gasps> during the commercial break. You know what it is? Imus is marrying a younger woman. Yeah. Well, how much younger is she? Well, she may beat your record, I'll tell you that. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. Who the hell is Regis Philbin and he can't pick the phone up and make a phone call? Oh, do, oh, do we think this is funny? Oh, yeah, I think You're it's... fired. You're fired. Hilarious. Get out, you're fired. Why don't you say something funny in the next two seconds? <laughs> Have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Flashback. Andy Rooney has been thumbing through a file of the fallen from one of America's least known conflicts. Uh, Andy? I'm reminded of Abraham Lincoln speaking at Gettysburg as I leaf through these records. The part about those who fell there having given that last full measure of devotion. Right. Sad thing about these records is that this final toll is not yet written. There's certain to be many more. You see, this is the file of former Ivis in the Morning executive secretaries. <laughs> I don't know if you've been paying attention over the years, but Imus goes through these folks faster than Jason making a slurry out of a high school pajama party. <laughs> and now, he's in the market again, yeah. reaching for that goalie's mask as the hunt starts anew for yet another executive assistant. Yeah. Now, before you drop your application in the mail, look for just a moment at some of the past I'm a secretaries whose photographs I've gathered on my desk here. Oh, okay. sure are a lot of them, aren't there? Yeah. Now, this is Angela, uh, one of the more recent. Her sobbing eventually would get to us all. <laughs> and this, this was Dale, yeah. once filled with such light, such promise. I think she's living in Seattle now, if I'm not mistaken, beneath a bridge on Interstate 40. <laughs> and look at this. This would be Claire. Mm. Not a day over 30, and she looks like Rose Kennedy. <laughs> I wonder if she's still living. <laughs> and here is Elon. Uh -huh. Moved back to her native Trinidad. And last I heard was playing for pennies in a steel drum band. <laughs> Karen here? Yeah, yeah. An awful story. Right. One day she just stood up, turned over her desk, walked out of here, and threw herself in front of a subway. <laughs> oh, and of course, Nancy, oh, yeah. the last to go. Good. Young African-American, right. once so confident, now just cowers there in the corner, wearing a do-rag <laughs> and making mammy eyes at anyone who approaches her. <laughs> and the others? Yeah. Well, most are in places where people while away their hours jerking involuntarily, <laughs> staring at patterns in the floor tiles, while drool slowly ruins their paper slippers, <laughs> fumbling things like he used to tell me that if the expiration date was up on the yogurt I brought him, that he'd have my house burned down with my family inside and all the doors nailed shut. Well, enough from the roll call of the dead here. Yeah. A piece of advice as I leave you. Oh, okay. Apply for the position if you must. But remember the sign that spans the entrance to hell. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. <laughs> Unless, of course, you happen to write a radio column for the Boston Herald, <laughs> then anything would be a step up. Yeah. Say... I just had a random thought. Oh. I wonder if Lorena Bobbitt needs a job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Eileen Mark. Hey, Beavis, check out this dude with the Bugs Bunny teeth. Hey, he looks stupid. Who is he, Papa? That's Oliver North. That what? Running against the massage parlor dude? Chuck Robb's not a massage parlor dude, Beavis. He just got a back rub from a woman other than his wife. Hey, I bet a front rub, too. <laughs> what are you doing, Papa? I'm looking at slides of all our opponents in the upcoming elections, Beavis. That's Dawn Clark Nitch. She's running for governor of Illinois. She looks like that old lady from the Wendy's commercial. Where's the beat? <laughs> Unfortunately, she's on our side, Beavis. This here's our biggest enemy. Who's that? Newt Gingrich. He's the House Minority Whip. So, like, what's that mean? He wants to whip all the minorities in his house? No, that's Michael Huffington. <laughs> what's his deal? Huffington supports Proposition 187, which denies illegal aliens the right to attend public school. So, like, he believes in aliens? No, that's this person. Ah, who's that? Bernadette Castro. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Martian in my couch. I was just wondering this time. Of some totally inoffensive sector of American journalism with the Dean of Broadcast Reporters, Walter Cronkite. And so we come to the end game of Decision 94. Nasty, resentful, indignant, bruising. An electorate bristling its discontent. 
It's been a field day for the pundits, slurping at this jugular of sullenness, receiving nourishment from the ugliness at the same time they themselves feed it. To join in this coarse chorus, if I may be forgiven this language, never have so many been this pissed off at so few since the South told the North to shove it. Anger is the byword of the day. And why? Because, frankly, it feels good. It's bashing for bashing's sake. Bash or be bashed. The candidates are bashing each other, the pundits are bashing the candidates, and the electorate would dearly love to bash both. <laughs> There's blood on the saddle and blood in the bronco. Good, clean, high-spirited, 90s-style fun. Yeah. Most of us understand this process, but not all. No. Enter here Richard Cohen, the bearded bard of the Washington Post. Attention, dear listener, he just doesn't get it. Dick, putting pink pen to puce paper, has chosen to waste a couple of more trees, clutching his hand to his breast to pout out loud that we've lost our national sense of humor this election year, that the fun part, the burlesque of politics, has been taken over by the policy wonk factor. Politics, laments Mr. Cohen, should be theater of the absurd, a grand old time of guffawing at the other guy. Cram it, Dick. Who asked you? <laughs> In a very recent commentary, Cohen belabored some obscure anecdote about how Franklin D. Roosevelt responded with humor to what he perceived as a Republican slight against the family dog, Fala, answering his critics through lighthearted jests in one of his famous fireside chats. Well, BFD. <laughs> For this old correspondent's money, the story would have been a lot better if it had ended up with him throwing the damn dog in the fire. And now what, Cleveland Amory? We don't want to lighten up this election here, Cohen, no. and we resent you telling us that we should. Yeah. Further, enough already with the hackneyed homilies, Dickie Boy the pedantic. Humor works like a mirror. Oh, really? What next? The pen is mightier than the sword? <laughs> if you shake it more than twice, you're playing with it? <laughs> the country's pissed, Richard, and likes it. Yeah. Gloom is in. As you yourself unnecessarily pointed out, concluding your column, FDR's pooch lies buried at Hyde Park, near FDR himself. Good. And speaking of things mirrors reflect, here's a hint. The beard's not working. And oh, yes, Joe Namath says he wants his hair back. For me to watch, this is Walter Cronkite. Thank you, and good night. Good morning, friend. Hi, Iris. I have a very good question. I just received your beautiful book, and the tape. How smart are you? Because this thing is about to go on the bestseller list, and you got yours ahead of time. That's right. Beautiful. Well, that's because I love you, and I knew it would. <laughs> Here is a woman, Charles. May I give her my recommendation? Yeah. Get a lobotomy. Yeah. Your radio sounds funny in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. How'd you like this picture of the I-Man on the back? Gorgeous. Can't you see why little Deidre Coleman loves me to death? I certainly do. Uh, and you know what? She must be a great person. Absolutely wonderful. She sees all the parts of you that a lot of people miss. Am I dreaming? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on 25 after the hour. Sports Radio 66, Hey, Papa, there's lights in the sky outside with an assault rifle. Don't even joke, Beavis. Yeah, yeah. He's standing on top of a car that has a I'm gonna kill the president bumper sticker. This isn't funny. And he's wearing a I love assassinating t-shirt. Cut it out, Beavis. You're such a butt wife. Don't be such a what? Well, between the planes crashing into my living room and the nuts taking target practice out by my fence, I'm starting to feel a little jumpy. Hey, Papa. Put that down, Beavis. Jeez, don't you realize that Francisco Duran exemplifies the epidemic of violence paralyzing this country? He bought that weapon the day I signed my crime bill. Guns are cool. Guns kill people, Beavis. No, they don't. Bullets do. Now, you're just splitting hairs. Bet this Duran dude can split hairs with that assault rifle of his. Hmm. Good point, Beavis. What are you doing? I'm calling the authorities. How come? I want to urge them to give Duran a second chance. Why are you going to do that? I also want to give him Newt Gingrich's address. <laughs> That'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. Breaking the law. Breaking the law. Bubba <laughs> here on the Imus in the Morning program. Delbert's got a blues cruise coming up. Yeah. Imus in the Morning. 2020 sports. I take it there is some... All right, going to talk a little Fred Iver from Santa Fe to Mexico. Here I John is in the basement mixing up the medicine. I'm on the pavement thinking about the government. A man in a trench coat, flat job, laid off the stage. He's got a bad cough, wants to get it paid off. Look out, kid, it's something you did. God knows when, but you're doing it again. You better duck down the alleyway looking for a new friend. A man in a tin skin cap in a big pen on $11 bill. Busy morning on a Today Show and so on. We blew 
a national radio program. I'll have to talk to a bunch of shut-ins and senior citizens. <laughs> Tim Russell, good morning, Mr. Russell. Good morning. Now that the, uh, the threat of war is over, I did have time to uh, look at this Esquire article. Yeah. And the, uh, the picture is particularly striking. It looks like a, a two sides wax to the imperity of the American Gothic for Christ. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let me, let me, are you trying out for the World Wrestling Federation? <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to I'm up in the morning. Well, that picture was actually taken in a room in my house. So. Would you wear this outfit in to see Bob Dole? Yes, I, I, I'd go ask Bob Dole what I wore in to see him. Now, Barney Frank, I had to stay up, but not Bob Dole. I'm up in the morning. Tim Russert. Sports Radio 66, WFA. Dick Abersall about Randy Cross. You couldn't ask for more than today than you got today if you're a sports fan. Every little nook and cranny was covered. Good job, Legion Johnson. We get all the spots in somehow. And Mike and I will see you over the weekend. I'll see you tomorrow at 10. And Mike will see you Sunday at 9. Enjoy your football on a fan. Good show coming up, of course, Mr. Jennings and Mr. Coleman with Friday Night Football. Listen up to that. See you tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk to them, and uh, we'll get a couple of callers from Dallas, and we'll get a couple of you guys in here talking about the Giants and Dallas game. Again, our problem is I can't really boost the Giants a whole lot because I think the Cowboys are going to win, so help me out. Timeless covers the New York City Marathon on the fan, and Deirdre Coleman will run it this Sunday. How long will it take her? Five hours. Send your guests to WFAN Marathon, P.O. Box 1270, Long Island City, New York, 11101. Four hours. Postcards only, 21 and older. Deadline November 5th. Winners announced November 8th. Three hours. Grand prize, a week's trip for two to Athens, Greece, home of the original marathon, where you'll stay at the Athens Libra Marriott. Two hours. Contest rules are on file at our studios. From Vermont Pure Water and Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Three minutes, she's going to fly. <laughs> WFAN 2020 Sports. Good morning at 9 o'clock. This is John Bengt. 59 degrees, skies are cloudy, and that's what's happening. This is John Minko with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Jets football. <laughs> back on the fan sports radio 66 wfan richard near we're here until 10 o'clock today and coming up in just a very few moments we are going to join a radio station called the ticket in dallas texas and we'll be talking to a couple of their hosts and a couple of their callers if you'd like to join in and be on the radio both in new york and in dallas simultaneously just give us a call at 718-937-6666 our sports phone number here in new york the jet preview and what can you say? I mean, you can't really predict this game because the Jets, of course, beat the Bills in week one up there. Bills have lost to the Colts, so it's, it's anybody's ball game. It's real difficult to predict who's going to be up for tomorrow. Let's find out who my brother Fred is supporting. You want him? Excellent idea. Good morning, Fred. Hey. Okay, who do you support in a Texas governor's race, Ann Richards or George Bush? Ann Richards. All right, how about uh, in Massachusetts, Kennedy or Romney? Oh, Kennedy, and I told you Kennedy was going to win that months ago, and you thought I was full of it. Diane Feinstein or Michael Huffington yeah. out, in the, out in the coast? I kind of like Diane Feinstein. How about in the governor's race for Kathleen Brown or Pete Wilson? I like Kathleen Brown. Oh, man. Why don't you just pull on a pair of panties? For yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is enough. If your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. Prosecutor William Hodgman made another black juror cry again yesterday. How do you make the juror cry? I guess just, you know, just play the tape of one of Fred's phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Imus in the morning on the fan. Voice Radio 66. WFAN. WFAN. 2020 sports. Good morning at 10 o'clock. This is John Minka. Douglas Trivel. 
21. Your current Central Park temperature is 63 degrees. Skies are mostly cloudy. That's what's happening. This is John Minko with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. <laughs> Good morning in New York. Good to have you with us. Fifth day of November, 1994. Mike Hayes and uh, Stevie Cohen across the way. 718-937-6666. And boy, it's good to have some sports to talk about on a Saturday. Nice to have you aboard. If you chat here until 1, uh, a lot of folks out today, including Larry Merchant, on the Foreman Mora fight. That's, of course, on HBO tonight at 10. But today we start with something besides college football and NFL football. We start with the Knicks. So- here on the fan. Nice to have you with us on a Saturday. Frankie and Patterson. It really paid for that trade. That's a fair point. Couldn't reach sign. I'll tell you, Eric Montross looked good last night, man. Now, I hated him in his senior year in college, but anybody, out of, anybody from that Dean Smith system, beware. Lots to do today. John Butler of the Bills. A couple of thoughts of him following the update with the big man. Come on back. <laughs> chance of an afternoon shower tomorrow, high 71. Your current Central Park temperature is 64 degrees. Skies are partly sunny. That's what's happening. This is John Benko with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. <laughs> Nice to have you with us on a Saturday morning here in New York City. Lots of cooking. We've had a lot of fun already today. You heard Jerry Bailey on about the Breeders' Cup. You were, you were here, Larry Merchant, on the fight tonight. Got a little bit later on. It's HBO at 10. Uh, all the NBA, all the college football will do some uh, Syracuse Miami a little bit later on. Here until 1, Eddie to follow, and John Butler will join us now. John, of course, the executive VP GM of the Bills. 5-3 and three against the Jets. It's tomorrow afternoon at the Meadowlands. A very... Russo on the fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Looking to find a good... Mark Dunn. Kurt Barber is nothing scintillating. I agree with that. But a lot of these drafts, when you get past these third, fourth rounds, is a crapshoot anyway, when you think about it. You know, how do you know how the... You know... Half these guys, you just don't know. You don't, you, don't, you don't really have a... You know, you take a chance and you hope. 12 o'clock. Larry Merchant coming up on the fight. Don't go away. Sports Radio 66, WFAN New York, WFAN 2020 Sports. Good afternoon, it's 12 o'clock, I am Vince Galici. Skies right now, 67 degrees, and that's what's happening. I'm Vince Galici with 2020 Sports and WFAN, the flagship station for New York Jets football. <laughs> okay, back out of fan hour three. Nice to have you with us here on the fan today. Jerry Bailey today, John Butler today. Your calls are the sex, 718-937-6666. Mr. Russo. As he moves into the afternoon hours, Eddie Coleman at one. Uh, listen for that a little bit later on. Larry Merchant tonight, HBO, doing the fight. Uh, it's Michael Mora and his ex-partner, I, I should say still partner, George Foreman. How about that? Larry joins us from Las Vegas. Larry Christopher Russo in New York. How are you this morning? I'm splendid. I wish it was as warm. <laughs> Mike Sherrard of the Giants throwing anything his way. And I, you know I like throwing a football. I mean, one or two, please. Back after this. Paul Holden and Dave Jennings bring you Jets football all season long on the fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. You got to get there at 7 a.m. You like one or two marathons. But hey, great job out of Stevie Collins today, Joe Chin, Mike Hayes. Uh, Eddie coming up at 1. We will see you Monday uh, at 1 o'clock. Enjoy your football and all the sports this weekend. Uh, and uh, have a good one. Adios. From Astoria. See you Monday.
Today, Susan Wallman will come your way then at 5. And uh, our first guest this afternoon will be Dick Versace at about 125 or so. Dick, of course, with TNT and a little bit on the NBA. It certainly clips the old mark by two yards set by J.J. Jennings. That was set against UMass back in 73, 21 years ago. So good job for Terrell Willis today. Owls go to 5-3-1. and one. Two left, and if they get those, they have an outside chance at a... Hold it. We'll see. Coming up to four, Vince Delisi has the latest. I'm Ed Goldman. we got an hour to go here on The Fan this Saturday, so keep it here. Six on the fan as we take you to five o'clock today. I'm Ed Coleman. Susan Waldman will come aboard at five and take you up until nine. ESPN will come your way then. A couple of races to go in the Breeders' Cup at the Turf and then the Classic. So five races are in the books. Last winner was Timber Country, I believe. Yeah, the Juvenile. So a couple more to go. Breeders' Cup without Holy Bull. Please. 4.32 on the fans. WFAN here in New York. I'm Ed Coleman. We go to 5 o'clock. One race to go at the Breeders' Cup. That is the Classic. That'll be coming up. We're back. Talk about your favorite football team all season long on the fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Linda with... Right, the... Charlie's toes and JoJo's ankle, right? Yes. They got four big hours coming up, right? Right up until 9 o'clock. Susan Wallman up next on the fan. We've got to thank our guests today. Nick Versace, TNT, Vic Carucci, Buffalo News, Luke Duva, and the foreman Moore of Fight, and Dave Ryan up at Syracuse. Coming up to five, thanks to Stevie Cohen, thanks to Joan Chin, of course. I'm Ed Coleman. I catch you tomorrow on the NFL in action here on the fan. Have a good night. Thanks to Vince Delisi, who is up next as well. See ya. with 2020 Sports and WFAN, New York's home for Notre Dame football. <laughs> 504 here in the fan. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Susan Waldman. I will be here until 9 o'clock. Wasn't I just on the air? I think I was. Quarter of 7 this morning with Richard Neer. Last night from the Boston Garden. Night before last with Eddie. Okay, Celtic haters, this year's going to be for you, folks. Enjoy it. This is going to be hideous. Last year at the Boston Garden, they're going to take the parquet floor across the street to the new, new arena. The new 2020 sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Jets football. <laughs>
with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. <laughs> Open phones now for the next hour, 718-937-6666. Thanks again to Kim Mattingly, Paul Newdell, Andy Zimler, Bill Rogers, Rod Dixon. That was just Cliff Brown of the uh, New York Times talking about the Knicks. We'll talk about anything you want right now. Let's go to, I know, he's been holding on forever. Joe in Brooklyn, you've been... Drink water. Be very careful. It's going to be very hot. Have a wonderful day. My special thanks to Bill Rogers, Rod Dixon, Bob Ryan, Kim Mattingly, Cliff Brown, Pony Dale, Andy Zimbalist, of course, Lisa Johnson, and Lula Shepard on the other side of the glass. All you callers, Ed Coleman and I will be back Monday night for a big six hours. So in the, the uh, commercials of the Giants game, give us a call. I'm Susan Waldman. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. Thanks, Bob. Late fourth quarter now in college football. Number 14, Colorado State leading Wyoming 35 to 24. Less than a minute to go in that one. In the NBA, Seattle beat Utah 110-103 in Portland down the LA Clippers 112 to 95. after the fact, or at least 20 years after the last time he held the championship, George Foreman is back, large and in charge. He's got two-thirds of the heavyweight division under his massive wing. 718-937-6666. Foreman winning the WBA and IBF championships tonight with that stunning 10th round knockout of a stunned Michael Moore. Now it says here, George, should take... Those fat, stupid Lima were mean to my little friend Steve Cohen when I tried to interview him. And now I hate him. A bunch of fat ingrates. Well, Don... I hate to keep talking about fat people, but, but you've lost a lot of weight. I, just, I saw you the other day. You actually look... Actually, I find myself attracted to you. Well, that's good, but... And talking about being attracted to people, uh, your fiance is running in the race, correct? We figure she's at about... Uh, could be at about four miles now, and it's uh, she, she's she's capable of running about a 750 pace for 26 miles, and, and maybe a little less actually. So Deirdre is uh, in the race and rolling along, and Don will chronicle that for you uh, throughout the uh, morning and into the afternoon. Now, Don, let me mention just uh, quickly, uh, Go ahead. Mike, before football starts, you folks have a chance to get to your local bookstore, Walden Books, Barnes & Noble, pick up a copy of Gods of the Sun, listen to part of the tape, it's available in Simon & Schuster Audio, and get ready for the games and the finish of the marathon. That's how I'd want to spend my morning, Don, I know that. <laughs> and then uh, you also, of course, could call Fred in Santa Fe or wherever he is. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how about the phone number? Let's go. No. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody there today. <laughs> now, Don, you know, considering what happened last night, I know you watched the fight. You should have you should have entered the marathon this morning. You probably would have won it. <laughs> was that unbelievable? God almighty. He was losing all ten rounds, wasn't he? Hey, with Don, he had no chance to win. None. Except to knock this guy out, and he hits him with a right hand, and that's the end of it. I know. Everybody thought he was on his knees, thanking God he wasn't. He was calling, uh, you know, one to call some advertising agency. <laughs> now, he's got to be worth $100 million if he never fights again. No question. Tom, but I was glad to see that, and I guess he exercises that uh, rope dope thing in Zaire, finally. And uh, so good for him. Now, how are you feeling these days, okay? You know, I actually feel pretty good. I'm back running, and uh, I stopped smoking a couple months ago, so. I know Deirdre didn't want you to run in the marathon this year. 
Well, I'm, I'm not going to run 26 miles. I'm not going to go out to the Verrazano Narrows Bridge and stand around there and have people pee on me. So. Yeah, but she wants you to run next year. Why? Because after she marries you, she figures that's the way to get rid of you. <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to go out there and die. She has to put, she puts in eight or nine hard months and then the hell with it. Let's not start talking about personal lives here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have some ammo, don't you, Mikey? <laughs> <laughs> so back to Foreman, Don. <laughs> Well, let me ask you about a couple of football games. Who do, the, who do my Chargers play today? They play the Falcons, but with the backup quarterback. Uh, and uh, the Jets play the Bills. The Bills got to win by 70 points. Yeah, why is it your Chargers? Well, because they're 6-1 and one or 7-1 and one or whatever it is. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, who does Cleveland play today? Cleveland plays the Patriots. Uh, and is Bill back? Bill's back. He'd be on the sideline. He's feeling fine. He is fine. He is feeling fine. Uh, how do you see that game, the Cleveland Patriots? I have no idea, Don. Well, you're supposed to know this. Don, I don't, I don't know about that one. That one's a little tight. Oh, you know. I have a couple I like today, but that's not one of them. Where is that play, Dick? In Cleveland. Yeah. You remember Cleveland. Which games do you like? I like the Steelers today over the Oilers, and I like the Eagles to kill Buddy Ryan today. Oh, man, that's a big game, isn't it? I love them to kill Buddy Ryan. Where is that game? In Philadelphia. Oh, man. Buddy ball. Not a pleasant, not, not a pleasant pass today for him. Now, what is the, what is going, what is your prediction on Deirdre today? Three twenty-one seventeen. Don, can we be more exact? Okay, three twenty-one seventeen. I mean, uh, if, I mean, if everything goes right and uh, if she's trained well and she's, uh, she, uh, you know, she's put in full. I, I, I ride my little racing bike with her on these twenty-mile runs, and she's done twenty miles in two forty. So, so she's capable of doing. In the low 320s. Now, that must be a sight in Connecticut. Here's this beautiful <laughs> woman jogging along the street, and here's Father Time on a bike following her. <laughs> how, wait, we, how would you use behind her? Wait for me, honey. Stop and get some vital cake. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, it doesn't get any better than this, Mike. Nah, it's, it's, done. A, it's a great country. Get out of here. Thank you, sweetie. Goodbye. Don Imus, 12 o'clock coming your way. He'll anchor the marathon. Deirdre Coleman, his fiance, is running 321.17. So we will chronicle her time. They have a big contest. I get to, think you get to go to Greece if you pick, pick the closest time to when she wins. So we will see. <laughs> Okay. Hello. Hi, honey. I was just explaining how I walked into the room, one room of the suite there in Washington, and you were eating a Snickers bar the size of a baseball bat, weren't you? <laughs> what about the four hot dogs you ate at the U.S. Open? <laughs> well, uh, can you make it sound like I ate a hot dog? I would eat cement before I ate a hot dog. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. You do this all the time. Also, last night I'm trying to, trying to tell you a story. How many times do you either ignore me? change the subject or just tell me to shut up honey i've never told you to shut up and and i frankly i've heard the three bears a million times so <laughs> you're a jerk <laughs> bingo wfan 2020 sports good afternoon it's 12 noon this is bob usler Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Jets football. It's Imus in the Morning, live at the New York City Marathon on Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Thank you, Minko. You called that a little weasel. Well, we are here at the finish line of the 25th uh, annual uh, New York City Marathon. There's a fife and drum corps uh, comprised mostly of uh, guys my age who are, who are about 100 pounds overweight in little dresses, and they're out there beating on drums and playing bagpipes. And uh, a number of the previous winners are here, like Bill Rogers and some other folks, and they're walking around with little placards announcing the years that they won, and uh, and they're fairly tedious. Uh, if there's a light rain here, and uh, it's probably about 60 degrees, Kiefer Bush, uh, five-time winner of the New York City Marathon. Five-time survivor of the uh, special I miss in the morning broadcast at the marathon. Anyway, we are an hour and 19 minutes into this, and uh, the men are past the halfway point. In fact, it's, in fact, as uh, we're watching it here on Channel 11, they are coming across the Queensboro Bridge. So, uh, first, Gloria, let's talk about who, who are the favorite men uh, runners and then the women, first the men. Well, uh, in the lead pack right now, we have Vincent Rousseau of Belgium, uh, who got lucky today as the day has cooled down. He is the fastest marathoner coming into the, the event. Herman Silva from Mexico, oh, your pick. who is my pick. That's because he was raised on a ranch, and I'm superstitious. The I-Man developed his edge by being raised on a ranch. I have great 
faith in her mom, Silva. Well, hey, who knows what old her mom did? He can survive the streets of New York if that's what happens on a ranch. Steve Summers here, you there. Ryan Williams on the other side of the glass, 718-937-6666, number to call as we continue. Overnight, under the covers, closing. Some SBRTS with you and Delinus in the morning at 5.30 right here on your fan. New York City Dave Storm Band, the 3 o'clock flash. Coming up, stick around, don't go away, you know the whole thing. Wide right, Copeland wide left, Metzelard wings that left side, and now Kelly with the ball on third and four, throw over the middle, tip pass, and it's intercepted by Mo Lewis. Lewis has another interception, 20, 25, 30, down at the 41-yard line. Mo Lewis picks up the pass, his fourth interception of the season. Mo, Mo, Mo! It could have been a big momentum swing would have taken out of you know, what we had done right at the end of the uh, second quarter. Uh, so that was huge. Mo just continues to make plays uh, of just top caliber, and, and he's playing great football for us. And he didn't practice a lick this week, so it's a great effort by him. <laughs> Well, morning to you, and I be at 3.07 and 40 seconds, Monday morning on The Fan, New York City. Steve Summers here, you there. Ryan Williams on the other side of the glass, 718-937-6666. Number to call, line is open. As we continue overnight, under the covers, schmoozing. Some SPORTS with you and Delimus in the morning at 5.30, right here on your fan, New York City. And so... Special election flashpoint commentary by Mr. Washington senior political analyst, the late Richard M. Nixon. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, I'm in the morning. Good morning. I'm a little more formal today because I appear here with heavy heart, J.D. After long and careful reflection, I must violate two of my most fundamental precepts. Never speak ill of a fellow Republican and never agree with anything your idiot brother says. <laughs> Be that as it may, I nevertheless join Fred today in speaking against the senatorial candidacy of Oliver North of Virginia. Oh, oh my God. God. His sins cannot be forgiven, in my view. Yeah. And you know as well as I what he did. Well, yeah. In direct contravention of the express wishes of the United States Congress, he cavalierly ignored the Bolin Amendment. Right. Well, I mean, you know as well as I do how much I myself like to bowl. No, no. Always have. No, no. Still do, even in death. Idiot. And for this turncoat to just callously laugh at Bolin, as though it weren't one of our nation's most popular passengers. No, no, not well, Boline as in alley, Bolun as in don't send money to the Contras. Really? Yes. Huh. Well, never mind. <laughs> but North is still weird, you know. He just looks goofy, like a 58-year-old Opie with those Tom Foley ears and that right eye that turns in, kind of staring at his nose. Yeah. <laughs> While I never would have thought that I'd be in bed with Chuck Robb, Although it probably wouldn't have surprised him, no. I'm saying vote for the robster, no. as is another associate of ours, J.D., and if I may, the late General George S. Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Here's the reason I'm voting against Colonel North and urging you to do the same. He's a sissy. <laughs> if he weren't, when Nancy Reagan called him a liar the other day, he would have decked her. <laughs> That's a Marine? Believe me, people. The only person who ever more disgraced the American military uniform is Jocelyn Elders. That is all. Uh, not quite, uh, General. I, too, would like an opportunity to uh, express myself in this regard. Oh, Hello, this is Ted Kennedy. Really? Now that my own uh, political future seems secure, I'd like to speak in behalf of my Senate colleague, Chuck Robb, and against the candidacy of uh, Oliver North. While he never drowned anybody, he remains a cad all the same. <laughs> Senator Robb, on the other hand, shares many of my basic philosophical viewpoints. Yeah. He'll uh, do some toot with you, and so will I. <laughs> He's not adverse to crashing a party at 3 a.m., and neither am I. Right. And he'll jump in the sack with anything wearing a miss this or miss that sash over her shoulder, as will I. Yeah. Besides, uh, now that Chris Dodd has been legitimized, I need somebody to hang with. Yeah. Therefore... Let the word go forth from this time and place <laughs> that Virginia is for lovers, and Chuck is only doing his part. Thank you. And uh, thank you, uh, Senator. Uh, anybody else uh, want some of this? Don't mind if I do. Since I'm going around the country sticking my nose in where it don't belong and nobody asked for it, yeah. taking positions nobody'd expect, right. I'm urging you to keep Chuck Robb in the Senate. <laughs> sure, the man's a sleaze, but North is just stupid. Took a 
great idea, sold a bunch of government stuff at wildly inflated prices to camel jockeys, and didn't make a dime. <laughs> Instead, took the money, sent it to Taco Bandits in Nicaragua, and didn't even have enough left over to put a f***ing fence around his own house. Man's an idiot. Here's your slogan on this one, Dick. Perot is socking it in on Chuck. He ain't no bargain, but at least he don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Virginia senatorial race through a Dick's eye, J.D., that of Dick Nixon still making a difference as a dead president of the United States. Mary Madeline is the host of Equal Time. She's a co-author of All's Fair with her husband, James uh, Carville. Good morning, uh, Miss Matlin. Oh, good morning. <laughs> well, was it true that during the campaign your husband wore the same underwear for months? Or? Why am I not surprised of all the items in the book? That's the one you remember. <laughs> the one? Uh, he washed his underwear every night, though. Oh, he did? Mm -hmm. There's a little fact I hope he included. <laughs> well, uh, if you're already all sound, it's funny in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. You're supporting Oliver North? Yeah. So am I. Supporting a Republican Senate. I would rather have a guy to lie to Congress and lie to his wife. This is true, and as some man said to me, that anybody who got a massage and didn't get the rest mm, of it, I wouldn't vote for. That will be fine, Mary. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. The finish line at the marathon looked like an illegal border crossing near Tijuana, Mexico. Andale, andale, you maricones. Congratulations to that hot-looking babe, the Kenyan women's winner. <laughs> that would be enough. Stop there. Tell you what, that new Mercedes, she want to look nice in the driveway of her hut. <laughs> Bloody joke. <laughs> God bless Proposition 187, eh, Mr. Mars? That would be enough. Oh, the daily number. What are they? The wind fall number, 2944. Yeah. Speaking of TV, I miss Namar. Yeah. Was that Cagney and Lacey last night or Cagney, Cagney and Limbaugh, be Jesus? I don't know. <laughs> Let me say this to Cab Calloway, looking like Ed Bradley from 60 Minutes, be Jesus. The earring is pathetic. Wake up, you're an old black man with gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a bloody photo negative, be Jesus. <laughs> the ten numbers is a solid. What? <laughs> now you get to the big ten numbers, eh, Miss Namar? What? Gather on the radio, boys and girls. Oh, here we go. Uh -oh. The Cardinal has a little election eve limerick. Oh, good. I like these. Good. Entitled, The Iron Man, Political Broker or Loudmouth Joker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he put fat legged Clinton in the White House, and her hubby Bill, the perverted louse. Politicians and pundits have honest there in awe. But to the average listener, he's a pompous bar. <laughs> Listen to him chat with Paul Begala. I'd rather suck face with Dana Shalala. <laughs> <laughs> he likes Marion Barry, hates the tomahawk chop. A white Uncle Tom whose heart should just stop. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're weak and find that by Amos you're persuaded, remember this man in a phone booth once urinated, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, throw the smug selfie, Jesus. Take your numbers as a spellers. Do you hear the bad news, Amos Lamar? <laughs> no. And just after a visit to the Boston Archdiocese. Right. We found out what Rose Kennedy said when she heard poor Jackie Onassis had passed away. And now, this, uh, uh, don't uh, just uh, stop uh, here. Uh, this is just, just eliminate just this. Hold it. She wondered, was Teddy driving? Never forget. Number is solid. One, two, five, six, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-nine, thirty-three, thirty-five, forty, forty-one, forty-nine, fifty-two, sixty-seven, seventy-two, seventy-four. <laughs> Seventy-five. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you, Cardinal O'Connor. Yeah. Which is the long and wide? Oh, I'm sorry. What's the long and wide? Which is the long and wide? All right. Eh? It's Jesus. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> right. A. Abby Hoffman. Abby Hoffman. B. Truman Capote. B. Truman Capote. C. Inus in the morning. Which is the long and wide? Well, clearly, Inus in the morning. Brown, you two-legged hammer <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, all three of these dead or dead-looking fat mouths were big in the 60s. Yeah. And have had frivolous books published. Yeah. The answer is A. Abby Hoffman doesn't belong because unlike the other two. Uh-oh. Abby Hoffman never choked on a penis, be Jesus. <laughs> oh, God, come on. Oh, oh, I mean, that was, it was fine up to there. Go right, on ahead. Move. <laughs> <laughs> it's 23 after the hour. William Sapphire is on the op-ed page of this morning's New York Times. <laughs> Repeating the joke first heard here on the I Miss in the Morning program. Yeah. About the guy who spent the night with uh, Lorena Bobbitt, Tanya Harding, and Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. He woke up without a penis. His, both his knees were broken. He didn't have any health insurance. <laughs> now, if you're driving in your automobile, I know many of you are. You may want to get both hands on the wheel there. Uh, Diebler told me that I drool in my throat. Oh, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> God. Yeah, he's now lost control of like, body functions. I haven't lost oh, control of body geez. functions. I mean, I... You see this old... <laughs> yeah. He's just lying at a mouth, gate open, and drool running down the side. If your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to I'm us in the morning. Hey, Fred. You know, it's making me sick. Huh? <laughs> you know, what you ought to do, how you can solve that problem. How? Take the bedpan and put it by your head. <laughs> <laughs> I miss in the morning. Sports Radio 66, WFAN. In New York is John Cardinal uh, O'Connor. Good morning, Cardinal O'Connor. <laughs> Good morning, God bless. Good morning, Cardinal O'Connor. Let me say this, eh, Mr. Mars. All right. The only thing you have in common with Hemingway is that you look like you've been shot. I said, I've been there to be a flashback. All right, here now, I'm a Washington Senior Military Affairs Advisor, the late General George S. Patton. At age, I'm appearing before you people this morning regarding an issue of protocol and procedure. My subject is something I want you to make note of and remember as you make your way through your military and or government careers. I bring it up because it is something I hope you will avoid. In today's ever-thickening atmosphere of political correctness, there is a proclivity among individuals in leadership roles, in positions of ultimate responsibility, to step forward when the sh** hits the fan and announce with brand self-abasement and self-censure that, yes, they assume, as it's usually stated, full responsibility for whatever sh** hit whatever fan. <laughs> this public acknowledgement of guilt is, in every case, performed with sweeping self-righteous sanctimony and melodramatics. 
please turn your attention to the overhead projection. Private, show those lights. I believe you will all recognize these figures, who are among the more recent practitioners of the theatrical mea culpa art. Reno, Attorney General. Kelso, Admiral, retired United States Navy. Perry, Defense Secretary. The common characteristic, the shared trait of all these people, here, here, and here, is a phoniness so pure that it would have given Houdini a hard arm. <laughs> Very brief case review. Right. Janet Reno, the Attorney General of the United States, stepped forward, finally, to accept responsibility for the incineration of a barn full of Jesus freaks called the Branch Davidians, begging the question, would there be somebody else responsible? <laughs> She's the Attorney General. Why is it necessary for the obviously responsible party to step forward and say she's ultimately responsible? <laughs> William Perry stepped forward to say that he, the Secretary of Defense, accepts the responsibility for two American F-15s playing space invaders with two American helicopters. <laughs> He's the Secretary of Defense. Who else would be responsible? Mother Teresa <laughs> and Admiral Kelso accepting ultimate responsibility for tail hook. Who else? Tom Cruise? <laughs> there is no emptier pronouncement, people, than the top officer of any agency or organization accepting responsibility for some idiotic blunder that has occurred at some point down the chain of command. Yeah. It started with, next slide, Private, this man, Harry S. Truman, <laughs> when he stepped up, took responsibility for blowing a jillion japs in the jelly and said, this is where the buck stops. It stops with me. I take full responsibility. Well, no sh Sherlock. <laughs> of course you take full responsibility, because you are fully responsible, you sawed-off hat hawking hick. <laughs> You're the president. <laughs> of course, I must confess, empty as the gesture is, it would be refreshing to have a certain current president step forward to accept responsibility for something, anything, other than his decision announced to those no-nonsense interrogators of MTV to wear jockey briefs. Any questions? That is all.
convention to remind ourselves where we come from and to claim the future for ourselves and for our children. Today, our great Democratic Party, which has saved this nation from depression, from fascism, from racism, from corruption, is called upon to do it again. I see my light from shining from the west down to the east. And if they now, and if they now, I shall be ready. I must in the morning. Twelve minutes after the hour. The following is a paid political announcement from the Massachusetts Coalition for the Preservation of the Status Quo. Hello, I'm Ted Kennedy. Well, this is it, the climactic moment of a turbulent election year, the day on which you must decide the future of your representation in the United States Senate, the hour when you must say unequivocally whether you shall send a man to that august deliberative body who is a shrill, paranoid whiner, bordering on the dysfunctional in my view, or whether you'll send my opponent, Mitt Romney. <laughs> I hope at the end of this day that I can count myself among the handful of Democrats who have managed to stave off midterm election disaster and return to the public trough. <laughs> my fate is in your hands. I was not helped in my effort the other night when I was the victim of what amounted to a drive-by taunting by the host of the ABC Nightline program, Ted Koppel. Yeah. Mr. Koppel sought to make me appear the fool by hammering me repeatedly about a less than dignified moment from my campaign. My visit with Ms. Kennedy and First Lady Hillary Clinton to a daycare center during which we had to sing Itsy Bitsy Spider, like some latter-day Tony Orlando and f***ing Dawn. <laughs> Jesus, I'm a senior United States senator. Well, I am not brought to you by the letter J and the number four, for crying out loud. Yes, uh, Mr. Koppel, it was humiliating. You're an asshole, and I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> Troubling as that was, the principal reason I'm speaking to you today regards something that has happened in the interim that has far more serious implications for my chances of success today. It's been brought to my attention that in the past 24 hours, I have been endorsed by Don Imus, the radio figure who is the host of this program. The Ted Koppel episode was merely humiliating. This is a catastrophe. <laughs> Imus, motivated by some misplaced sense of outrage over my treatment on the Koppel show, has come to my defense. Yeah. Jesus, haven't we Kennedys suffered enough? No. He even said that if he lived here, he'd vote for me. For the love of God, I implore you not to react to the compunctions of an idiot. Let the word go forth from this time and place that my negatives are already high enough. Yeah. I went into this thing leading for God's sake. And so, as with so many other things that have bedeviled me across the years, let's just pretend that this too never happened. <laughs> yes, in a campaign in which I battled back from being inundated, uh, I, oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Senator from the state of Massachusetts. With one last bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so I just voted. I voted for Cuomo, and then I voted for uh, Deidre would run the marathon in 321.17. She ran it in 332.09. Stop jumping up and down and screaming, because I spotted yeah. her about a minute before she got there. Then her legs kind of buckled on her. So I'm walking her down the street, and it's like walking a drunk down the street, you know. <laughs> Which is turning uh, the tables. <laughs> Your radio sounds funny in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. Among the celebrity finishers, as mentioned earlier, Deidre Coleman completing the race three hours, 32 minutes, nine seconds. Ms. Coleman said she enjoyed her second marathon. It was fun. Better her time of last year <laughs> by almost an hour. Uh, gee, how'd you, how'd you get a microphone? Uh, how'd you get that tape on her? Some of our reporters were at the race. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Imus in the morning. Going for the 9X Mobile Fan Highway Patrol. I am Iris, the morning is 26. 2020 Sports. Bakeman with a play action. Now on the I Miss in the Morning program, my fat friend, Rush Limbaugh. Good morning, Rush. My friends, mega diddles. It is I, the round mound of sound, Rush Limbaugh, preparing to set my instruments on full gloat mode <laughs> as we enter into a new age of right-minded thinking, yeah. the changing of the guard, the abdication of the whining wussies, and the ascension of the Ayatollah of Controla, Bob Dola. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a little kid on the night before Christmas. Here I am, poised upon the precipice of greatness, with only a few million 
votes to go before everything I've been saying for the past two years comes to pass. Then finally, there will be no doubt that I am the supreme and solitary master of the universe. Once the smoke is cleared and the results have been tallied, I will stand proudly in the battlefield amidst the multitudinous corpses of the Democratic Party and smile knowingly, fighting back the urge to say the sweetest words known to man, I told you so. <laughs> the House and Senate are about to be given a philosophical high colonic. So many Democrats out of work. <laughs> what a joyful image, isn't it? Paul Begala and that James Carville, who I like to affectionately refer to as Mary Metlin's Frankenstein. <laughs> there was somebody who looked like he was put together with a variety of other people's body parts, it is this Cajun crybaby. That's a forehead that should not be viewed in profile in front of a Darwinist, I tell you. It's a wonder he has opposable thumbs. Anyway, Mighty Joe Liberal will be there, along with Vice President Al Gore, wallowing in their misery, not knowing what they should do first, wipe the egg off their faces, or help the president dust himself off and get the license plate of the bus that ran over him. The great Bob Dylan said it best, the times they are a-changin', and now the hearts that are a-bleedin' will be a-cryin' in the chapel. <laughs> Why, I haven't felt this good since Gary Hart's Kodak moment. <laughs> Once Obi-Wan Bob Dooley takes control of the Alliance, it will only be a matter of time until I am glorified and canonized as the oracle of the oral majority. Great alabaster statues will be erected in my image, the bloated Buddha of Bombast. Millions will come to kneel at my bunion feet to worship the Praetorian Pundit Prince. It is then that the prophecy will come to pass, and I invite Don Imus to eat my shorts, as I will be revealed as God's other son. <laughs> More after this. <laughs> Man Walter Cronkite spotted at the Grateful Dead concert at Madison Square Garden. He's clearly gone. <laughs> what would Walter Cronkite be doing at a Grateful Dead concert, trying to tell people he liked it? Mr. Cronkite reportedly is friendly with the band's drummer, Mickey Hart. Oh, come on. <laughs> and so there were well, I mean, Walter and Mrs. Cronkite, by the way. If your radio light sucks in the morning, you're listening to I Miss in the Morning. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, what can I tell you? I mean, it's got to be. Uh, can you imagine? Do you have any papers, young man? <laughs> <laughs> Getting off of that case of job. That's exactly right. <laughs> Cell in Indiana, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Uh, Don't do that. Good morning, Mr. Chomp. How are you? Fine. Hey, thanks for the copy of your book, God's Other Son. You're welcome. It was very thoughtful. Just what I needed. Sexually explicit reading material. <laughs> Why didn't you just send me something I could use, like a calendar? <laughs> what am I supposed to do after reading this thing? Take a cold shower? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Can't spend too much time in a prison shower. You know what I can't believe? No. You wrote this book, and I'm the one in jail for sexual assault. <laughs> this is sick stuff, Mr. Chomp. Oh, I always knew you were obsessed with your penis, but this is ludicrous. <laughs> I suppose it's not your fault. Really? This whole country is penal obsessed. And I should know, I'm a veteran of the penal system. <laughs> Ain't nobody more obsessed with Mr. Dinky than us cons. Yeah. But I mean, the past couple of years, the country's gone ding-dong crazy. Since I've been in here, you had Joey Buttafuoco, who couldn't control his penis, yeah. John Wayne Bobbitt, who couldn't keep his penis on, and Michael Jackson and President Clinton, who was threatened with having their ass picked out of a lineup. <laughs> and now there's this book out about Clarence Thomas that, if it's true, mean he has stud muffin and he lied to the Senate committee, which makes him both Chuck Robb and Oliver North. <laughs> Books say there was other women who could have corroborated Anita Hill's story about sexual harassment. Yeah. Brothers, little Porky be working overtime. <laughs> and even though Jessica Hahn been both, these were women like the former public relations director of the EEOC, Angela Wright, yeah. said the judge show up at her house unannounced talking about how big her titties was. <laughs> I do that stuff, I get put in jail. He do that stuff, get a job on the bench at the Supreme Court. Well, I I guess the only way a black man gets justice is if the justice is a black man. <laughs> this anybody who should have read your book, it's old Judge T. Not only because it got all of them hot steaming pots, but he could have benefited by snapping his Peter a few times. Or beating on it with his gavel. <laughs> they should have called that book Horny Justice. Here come the judge. Here come the judge. Then he smoke a cigarette. That'll be fine. <laughs> I'm coming, Tiny! 
tiny read your book too. Now every day we gotta act out a scene from it. Uh-huh. Today we're doing page 91. Uh-oh. I don't know who I'd rather play, Step Edna or Little Billy. <laughs> I guess Little Billy, cause I think I'd rather get my Mr. Dinky snapped than have to bear my hot steaming butt. <laughs> you don't need to wear the man in the tree to win blue. You don't need to wear the man in the tree to win blue. You don't need to wear the man in the tree to win blue. You don't need to wear the man in the tree to win blue. I'm a the morning. Cinema. predicted that uh, Deborah would run the marathon in 321.17. She ran it in 332.09. So I'm jumping up and down and screaming because I spotted yeah. her about a minute before she got there. Then her legs kind of buckled on her. So I'm walking her down the street and it's like walking a drunk down the street, you know. <laughs> What's about turning the tables? <laughs> <laughs> Your radio sounds funny in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. Among the celebrity finishers, as mentioned earlier, Deidre Coleman completing the race three hours, 32 minutes, nine seconds. Ms. Coleman said she enjoyed her second marathon. It was fun. Better her time of last year <laughs> by almost an hour. Uh, gee, how'd you, how'd you get a microphone? Uh, how'd you get that tape on her? Some of our reporters were after uh, all day. <laughs> <laughs> WFAN 2020 Sports. Good evening at 6 o'clock. This is John Minko. This is John Minko with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. say Howie Rose with you on the fan on and off and then on again until midnight tonight as right smack in the middle we'll have the Knicks home opener at Madison Square Garden against the Los Angeles Lakers for you so we'll have some opportunities before and after the game to head to the phones at 718-937-6666 on a day after that probably feels about the Giant fans as Sunday morning must have to Michael Moore but at least as far as the Well, Billy, is there anything I can do now? 
anything that would be uh, redemptive, anything that would even begin to atone for my terrible bedtime screw-up. Well, yes, it is, silly beloved. Does the name Walden Book register on that pea brain of yours? The only path to redemption for you is the one that leads to the Walden Book checkout counter with about five copies of God's Other Son tucked under that fat, hosy, brown-looking arm of yours. And if you know what's good for your country, you'll get the hell out there and start the atonement process today, saying, Well, I'm so sorry, Billy. I haven't heeded the call of one nation under Hargis and God's other son for all. <laughs> Somebody give me 23 bucks or can I get an A? Man? <laughs>